Sometimes it feels like there's just so much going on in the world of Steam Deck that I just can't keep up, you know? From Steam announcing their sales ahead of time to new community tools getting constant updates, plus new official updates to the official Steam Deck client hint at the future of where the deck is going. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. Steam sales and their festivals have become such an event that even the announcement of the dates is big news. I've been watching these sales for so many years that Valve has essentially trained me to never buy a game outside of these sales windows. Though I do keep an eye on third-party storefronts too. These events go a long way to help curate Steam's digital storefront since they have over 76,000 games at the time of writing. Valve has announced all of their upcoming sales and festivals and we're in for yet another jam-packed year of deals. The biggest sales are noted as major seasonal sale and there are four heading our way this year to coincide with the changing of the seasons. The spring sale will start March 16th and run through the 23rd. The summer sale runs from June 29th to July 13th. The autumn sale, November 21st through 28th, and the winter sale, December 21st through January 4th. In the interim, we have several festivals celebrating indie games with a quarterly Next Fest, and then there are various genre celebrations, from the Mystery Fest, Puzzle Fest, Sports Fest, and more. So what Steam Fests are you most excited for? Leave me a comment and let me know. The latest release of Cryo Utilities has landed and it's got a few interesting features. There's a new VRAM tab that tells you the current UMA settings and gives you instructions on how to set it. The swap path and home directory should be completely dynamic and allow for generic Linux desktop use, which is a huge feature for CryoUtils. CryoByte 33 clarified cleanup messaging to say that non-cloud saves uh, for selected games will be lost. And he reintroduced the remove all uninstalled feature, which improved the logic of the feature. Again, nothing but praise for Cryobyte33, the work he does here is incredible. Next up, Cyberpunk 2077 has come a long way since its extremely rocky launch. It seems like just yesterday Sony pulled Cyberpunk from their digital shelves, but it's hard to believe that that was somehow two years ago already. So much has changed for Cyberpunk in these two years. The team squashed countless bugs, added free content, saw a massive boost from the fantastic Cyberpunk Edge Runners anime, and even an announcement of an expansion-sized DLC. Now in the latest chapter of Cyberpunk's redemption story is the game getting that oh-so-sweet green checkmark on Steam. The game is indeed Steam Deck verified, although its prior lack of verification didn't stop it from cracking the top 20 most played games on Steam Deck in previous months. And speaking of verified titles, Valve recently surpassed 8,000 playable and verified games. This is another nice round milestone for the Steam Deck to celebrate. According to SteamDB, there are currently 8,021 games playable and verified, with 5,034 being playable and 2,987 being verified. The latest games to get these ranks are Atomic Heart, the aforementioned Cyberpunk 2077, Darkest Dungeon, Octopath Traveler 2, and Resident Evil 3. It's exciting to see more and more games getting Valve's blessing like this. Now, if only certain developers could start actually supporting the Steam Deck, we'd be off to the races. So Valve has released a list of the top 20 games played on Steam Deck in February, and it's pretty interesting, so let's have a look at it. Topping the chart this month is Hogwarts Legacy. Now, there's no surprise there as it's one of the most popular current releases. Next is Elden Ring and Vampire Survivors respectively, titles which seemingly have endless staying power. At number four, Stardew Valley, a game that Emily and I both love. Then we have four open world games, Red Dead Redemption 2, The Witcher 3, Grand Theft Auto 5, and Skyrim. Rounding out the top 10 here are Hades and Rotato. So the question is, what do you think? What are your favorite games on this list and which games deserve more attention? Leave me a comment and let me know. And while you're down in the comments, I've got to ask, why haven't you liked that smash button yet? When you do, you'll be well on your way to seeing more videos just like this one. You can also subscribe if that's more your speed. I want to give a special shout out to Marcus Batson, one of my top tier singularity members on Patreon, as well as the 72 others who make what I do here a reality. So thanks. Retro Deck. Now, if you haven't heard of it, now is your chance. Retro Deck is one of the easiest ways to emulate games on your Steam Deck. You can just install Retro Deck, copy your ROMs, bada bing, bada bing, you're up and running. Well, Retro Deck just had a new update that focuses on the emulation experience as well as fixing a few bugs. Among the largest changes here is the removal of Ryujinx. Or is it Ryuji NX? I don't know. The problem is that Ryujinx is currently broken, so RetroDeck had no choice but to remove it. They also removed deprecated emulators from the configurator. 
This includes the legacy PCSX2 build. Can't believe I said that first try. Meanwhile, the other emulators included with Retro Deck have received updates to their latest versions, except for DuckStation. They also added new configuration options and made file moving safer. Now, if you haven't tried Retro Deck, it's one of the best and easiest ways to emulate your classic game collection on Steam Deck. It uses the wonderful emulation station front end to get you into your games, and it's just awesome. Give it a spin. It's entirely free software, and it's worth you taking a look at. All right, lastly, as is tradition around these parts, we're taking a look at the latest Steam Deck software updates. And this week's beta client release has a few things I wanted to take a look at, so let's dive into it. First, Valve fixed shortcut regressions in the beta when users or third-party utilities add command line parameters to the shortcut EXE path. They moved advanced HDR options to developer settings. They made it so that streamable games are now included in the ready-to-play game filter, though the default action is still to install them locally. They made it so that game invites in the quick access menu will now default to opening a context menu to accept the invite rather than navigating to the chat tab and having to hit accept there. They fixed some crashes when it comes to voice chat, fixed a crash when authorizing microtransactions in the overlay, they fixed the play button stealing focus when a game is launching, they fixed find games to play with friends not working in big picture mode, and for Steam input, interesting to note, they added support for mapping DualSense Edge wireless controllers on Linux, though that does require that Steam has access to read uh, slash dev slash hidrod devices. It's great to see that the Steam Deck is continuing to get new features and fixes as we move forward. I'm interested to see the Steam Deck get HDR support, but I'm wondering, what do you think is still lacking here? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear from you. Now, I've got to say thank you to all of the amazing folks that you see on screen right now. These people make what I do here a reality. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help support this show, you can buy me a coffee with a monthly pledge using the links below. And thanks. That's going to do it for now, though. Thank you for spending time with me here today, and I'll see you next time.